folks and uh, welcome to a bonus episode of COVID chat um, with me Dr Susie Wiles. Uh, normally we talk to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays about the science behind uh, COVID-19 and we're here today on a Sunday to do something just a little bit different um, and joining me today is uh, Damien from the Aotearoa Science Agency. Hi Damien. Hi Susie, happy Easter. I'm not a little bit different, um, I'm exactly <laughs> and the same you? as normal but um, we do <laughs> uh, we do have a special guest tonight, um, and uh, we're, we're going to talk to, um, uh, well, you're going to talk to um, uh, psychotherapist Carl McDonald, who's been doing a lot of work recently on COVID-19, and so we welcome your questions if you've been going through, I mean, everyone's been going through a hard time, but if you've got any particular questions about mental well-being, anxiety, what you can be expecting, what you might be seeing from um, friends, family, loved ones, um, then send us your questions to nzcovid at gmail.com, or if you're watching this on Facebook, then you can comment down below and we'll um, try and get some of those questions to uh, Susie and Carl. Um, I'll um, hand back to you now, Susie. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah, um, I just wanted to start, I guess, with uh, what's happened this weekend. Um, so we don't have any fancy graphs or anything today, but um, so Easter Sunday today and the uh, announcement of 18 new cases. So um, this has been a a good few days for us with you know still low numbers of cases so it um, definitely feels like the uh, lockdown is, is having an effect um, but what was very sad over the weekend was that three people have died of COVID-19 here in New Zealand um, and so obviously our thoughts uh, go out to their families um, and I just wanted to spend a minute just talking about how actually um, you know this isn't unexpected uh, it would have been very unusual for New Zealand to have got away with very, you know, without any deaths or with just the one death that we've had until um, just a few days ago. Uh, because we know that um, about on average, about 5% of people um, with COVID-19 uh, die, but that it is much higher for um, some age groups, uh, especially sort of the over 70s, um, and for also for people with underlying health issues. And so what I guess I just want to signal to everybody is uh, something that the uh, Director General of Health also signaled today was that we do have quite a lot of people who are over the age of 70 who have um, come down with this disease. Uh, and so, you know, we should be you know, expecting um, that not all of those will make it. So it's going to be really hard. Um, and one of the sad things, I guess, is that it also can take um, several weeks for somebody to actually, you know, to end up dying of COVID-19. So uh, that doesn't mean that the lockdown doesn't isn't working um, and we mustn't lose hope of that. So really, we will be staying um, like this for, uh, you know, a little while. Um, but yeah, that it's, you know, that it's, it's going to be sad and we're going to see more of these. Anyway, let's... Um, Let's get on with um, talking to Kyle. So yeah, Kyle McDonald, um, welcome Kyle. He's a physiotherapist, sorry, physiotherapist, a psychotherapist, a mental health advocate, and host of the Nutters Club on News Talk ZT ZB. Hi, Kyle. Kia ora, welcome, sir. Thanks for having me, Susie. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I just thought it would be um, really great to, to just have a chat to you, I guess, about the sorts of things that we're, uh, we're all experiencing um, at the moment and, um, and sort of, I guess, talk a little bit about what people have been asking you in your um, line of work. I guess one of the things that I maybe start by saying is that as a, um, as a scientist and as an infectious diseases person, um, I'm very comfortable in lockdown. Uh, I wasn't sleeping before this because I was so worried about what was going to happen if we didn't take the actions that we did. So I feel um, quite comfortable with where we are because of, I know why we're doing it, I guess. Um, but yeah, what what are other people uh, feeling out there? Who, who, you know, what are people saying to you? 
Yeah, look, I mean, I think there's a real mix. Um, the first observation I've had really is that people who can carry on working in whatever form that takes are generally doing better. Um, my household, all the adults leave because we're all essential health workers, so we all get to go out and do things. And so we're not all locked together, so that actually does make quite a difference. Um, and, and generally, I think if people can stay engaged with some kind of meaningful activity, that's really helpful. And it does feel like this last week people have sort of leveled out a little bit more. Um, although um, I noticed myself getting a bit more ratty towards the end of this week. Uh, but the, certainly that acute stress of the change, I think, has died down a little bit. Mm, yeah. Well, what about those people, I guess, who, um, so you said that those who are doing, are working still are doing better, but um, I know that uh, for my institution, the place where I work, there's almost a little bit of a, expectation that you can sort of carry on as normal i mean well you know there's sort of an acknowledgement that stuff is going on but i i do wonder a little bit um you know i'm in a very priv privileged position of having a teenager who uh really just wants to be left on her ipad all day that's just like her idea of bliss but if i had younger children that would be really difficult right um and so i just wonder also actually how people are coping with that and whether you're getting any um, anybody talking about that kind of, you know, still needing to be productive or something, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. And in fact, I, th I think I've, I've seen a number of people say, let's not describe it as working from home. Let's describe it as, as working from home during a pandemic, because there's a clear <laughs> difference, right? Um, and you're absolutely right. I I'm quite privileged as well, and that my partner and I can juggle our hours to look after the kids. Um, but if you are trying to do it all, it can be incredibly stressful. And it's really important if you're an employer or a business owner out there and you've got staff, ease up on them. Everyone's capacity is diminished at the moment. Um, nobody can do as much as they need to, because... Mm -hmm. We're all a bit exhausted by it. It all just requires a little bit more uh, cognitive effort to find our way through the day. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I guess, um, you know, what is a normal response is that, you know, what is there that we can compare this to, I guess? Yeah, that's really tricky. I mean, I, I think that the uh, first thing I'd say is whatever response you have is, is a normal response because we we've never done this before. Humanity's <laughs> never shut down around the globe for a pandemic, so we don't know what that looks like. Um, I mean, people have talked about World War II and, and various other things, um, you know, the, the trauma of the Christchurch earthquakes, but ultimately we don't know. And I think one of the things we have to be really careful of is, um, you know, psychologists have talked about this idea of moral fatigue with the pandemic, which is, you know, even the simplest of things, uh, whether you go to the supermarket, whether you handle things in public, whether or not to wear a mask, which I know you've talked about um, quite a bit. Mm. All of these decisions take on a life or death quality. Um, and in our normal day-to-day -day life, pre-pandemic, we're on autopilot a lot of the time. We don't think about these decisions. We just, we just do them. Um, and so that extra cognitive load of having to think about all of these things um, is what we call moral fatigue. And that's just exhausting. And it takes a bit of getting used to. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it seems that um, uh, certainly a lot of people are, are um, quite emotional and and um, close to tears. And so is that sort of uh, is that part of that moral fatigue that that sort of just um, making everybody a little bit more emotional, even if you your lives might not be that affected, uh, relatively speaking, I guess, if you are kind of in a privileged position? Yeah, I think it is. And I think it's that, that effort. Um, you know, we're all a bit more emotional when we're tired. I think not sleeping well is a pretty common um, symptom, if I can call it that, of what's going on at the moment. I don't, I don't think many people are sleeping great. Um, and also there's the, just the, that, that worry, which I think you can distract yourself from. But uh, my experience has been it's, it's a bit like grief. You sort of are going about your day and then you remember we're in the middle of all of this and it sort of hits you again. And, and I think that is exhausting. And certainly yeah. emotions being really close to the surface is um, is normal at the moment, if we can call it that. Hmm. I've certainly had a few um, times over the last few days where I've just thought, is this actually real? You know, or is this sort of, because I've also been having some weird dreams, um, quite surreal dreams. One last night's had Taika Waititi in it and uh yeah I, I don't know the other night it was about a train trying to catch a train to see my daughter they're all sort of a little bit odd um and so yeah I just sort of um I guess there's also that kind of you know we're all in weird dreams and then wondering is it a dream are we going to wake up and then go wake and then go oh no actually this is this is actually real it's so uh, 
<laughs> it's kind of a bit strange. So I guess, what can we expect as the next, you know, few weeks um, kind of roll on? How, how do you think it will affect us? Well, I mean, it's probably not a very good proxy, but I've seen a, a couple of interviews with people who've done uh, home detention sentences, and they, they all say the second week's the hardest. So um, perhaps things will get a little bit easier after Easter. Um, but I think it's also a sense of the light being at the end of the tunnel, um, you know, that with, even if it's extended beyond four weeks, it's not going to be a huge extension, it seems. Um, so there is a sense that we're going to get to the end of this. Um, I think the thing to really watch out for next is, uh, is, is the anxiety to actually be ongoing for people who've really struggled with this. We've seen um, in South Korea already when the lockdown came off reports of people really struggling to actually leave their house even when they were allowed to because that anxiety just sort of is quite pervasive um, and it, it takes quite a lot of work for some people to actually undo that. So we're going to need to continue to be gentle with ourselves and each other, I think. Mm. I've certainly um, noticed that uh, people are, are very, you know, I'm getting lots of questions about um, how should I behave at the supermarket and people are extremely anxious about that kind of being outside. But it's really interesting to me that they're, that they're not at all anxious about being, um, you know, meeting with their friends and neighbours at the bottom of the garden or, you know, the, at the, the um, driveway or something to have drinks. And it's so interesting because that's actually the most risky thing they could do, way more risky than going to the supermarket. But I guess it's, it's also the more natural thing, right, at the moment, where we're kind of heightened to um, the sort of what uh, the, you know, the, the, the threat that the that people we don't know and that being in the supermarket poses, but our friends and your know, neighbours are not a threat, even though actually that's the most dangerous thing. So I kind of find that really interesting, too, that we're quite bad about understanding what the risks really are. Um, and responding appropriately, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so one uh, of the yeah, things... Yeah, that, um, that's the in group... Guess, uh, oh. Sorry, Sorry, I was just going to say, that's the in-group, out-group stuff, isn't it? Um, we mm. we know that people, uh, you know, we're, we're hardwired to perceive people we don't know as a threat, and I think that happens with the virus as well. Um, and it's, it's really about, you know, making sure that we extend that kindness and compassion to everybody. I try and get around on the streets with a smile on my face and try and make eye contact. I'm sure some people think I've already lost my marbles, but um, I think it's a, it's a good starting place. Yeah, yeah, we went on a bike ride this morning and we're waving at everybody and they probably think, God, crazy people. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I guess, so coming, um, you know, with the, the rest of the lockdown and um, what sort of advice would you give to people uh, about how to get through the next sort of week or two? Well, I guess what I would say to people is, is if you're doing okay, then keep doing what you're doing. You probably already have a sense of what's working. And I think there's a really clear um, line. And I think some of it does come down to privilege, whether that be economic privilege or, or, or still being able to work uh, and maintain a balance in life. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are talking about this feeling like a holiday, and that's great. I, I don't begrudge you that. Carry on. Do, do as you're doing. Um, and stay home. Um, but I think we do have to be aware that the pressure is going to start to tell for other families where there is those strains and pressures. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, should, we know that the domestic violence rates are pretty high at the moment. We also know that people are drinking more than probably they should. So my advice is if you're doing okay, use some of that extra time and energy you have to reach out to someone who you think may not be doing so well, or, or even more importantly, reach out to people who you know uh, and your friend group are, are living on their own. Mm, yeah, I um, saw a wonderful Facebook post that you put about um, positive and negative emotions. And I love how you just call it bollocks. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that, about these positive and negative emotions? Yeah, yeah, happy to. I've always, I've always kind of had a, um, a bit of a thing for the whole positive thinking mantra. I think, you know, it's one of those things that it, it only works for the people for whom it works for. For, for most people, uh, when we talk about positive thinking, we're talking about the idea that we just need to sort of get rid of negative thoughts and emotions. Um, and at the moment, that's actually quite a dangerous idea because mm. because we are struggling in the midst of something that is causing very real distress. And so the, the, the trick is to be able to acknowledge that, to be able to feel those feelings, um, to not try to get rid of them, but to acknowledge them and then to act in a way that helps us to manage them. So if it's anxiety, try and get active or try and engage in some kind of relaxation. If it's um, feeling low or feeling sad or depressed, um, get physically or mentally moving and get engaged in something. 
but it's okay to have a bit of a cry and it's okay to acknowledge that this is really difficult. And if you are finding yourself struggling, um, get on the phone or the text and, and call 1737, which is the National Helpline Service. They're 24 seven, they've got extra staff at the moment. And um, you know it's absolutely fine to, to need that little bit of extra support at the moment. That's absolutely great advice. I guess, is there anything that you else that you'd like to say about how people can be helping their loved ones either inside or outside of their bubble? Any top tips? Uh, yeah, stay home. That, that would be the first tip. Um, <laughs> and, and second one is just make sure you're reaching out and keeping in contact. Um, you know, if, if you are on your own, even just a, a two or three minute phone call every day uh, makes a huge difference. Um, and make sure you're still getting that social contact, whether it be um, via video link by this or, or just picking up the phone or even just a text it. Keep in contact with each other. We're almost there. Um, let's just keep going for the next couple of weeks, New Zealand. Mm. Yeah, I um, I must say I've been sort of so busy with COVID-19 that I haven't really been reaching out. Um, uh, but yesterday, some friends invited us to do a uh, like a pub quiz with them online. And it was absolutely hilarious and just what I needed, you know, completely forgetting about this for just a couple of hours and and trying to, oh, I don't know try and do trivia that I had no idea about. It was, <laughs> it was really good fun. So, yeah, I think... Um, even those of us who are coping are probably not doing enough of that kind of reaching out and just doing something that is, you know, whether it's a bit silly or, um, you know, something as simple as pub quiz over <laughs> over a Zoom link. Um, yeah, anyway, let, let me see if we, do we have any questions? Oh, we do have, a, we, oh my goodness. Okay, we have some questions. Let's get these questions. Um, this is, uh, so what have we got? Oh no, these are comments more than questions. So Nikki Red says, I feel very secure in lockdown. The thought that in 11 days we could be at a lower level and essentially get out of lockdown fills me with a ton of anxiety. Oh yeah, so any advice for Nikki? So that's uh, coming out of lockdown, uh, feeling anxious yeah. about coming out of lockdown. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I yeah. think it's really important that we um, continue to trust trust the people that are in charge. Um, you know, the people in charge are listening to good people like Susie and, and, and other experts um, and recognise that, it, that lockdown ending is, is certainly not the end of our responsibilities and we're still going to need to be careful. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also true that, of course, my understanding is that you're probably still going to be able to choose how much you choose to exit your own home and go back to work at that point, especially if you have a job that you can do from home. So we can take that gently and we can take that with a little bit of time as well, which is important. Hmm. Um, Marie says, uh, living by myself, that eye contact while out of my walk is really uplifting. Um, that's really good to hear. <laughs> and I guess if we will keep doing that and yeah. making eye contact and waving at each other, um, that'll be great. Um, Janet says, how do you handle a lovely neighbor who brings you some of her baking? Oh, that's a bit tricky because I've been trying to say to people, please don't share things. <laughs> um, but I, then I, I baked some scones today, I must say, and I thought, oh, I feel like I should give them to give some to the neighbor. And I think that we are um, with this, we're almost fighting ourselves, right? Because we certainly felt this with the, um, you know, when we have to give up the hugs and the kisses, which we will have to do for quite some time, that it feels really rude to do that. And so I guess this is the same, right? Feeling either really rude that we aren't offering things or that we don't want to take them. Um, so yeah, any thoughts or advice for people on, on that? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is um, blame someone else. So say you've asked an expert because you weren't sure and, um, you know, they, they said that it's not a good idea to do that. That's sort of, you know, popping the bubble at the moment. But um, share, share, uh, invite them to share recipes, invite them to share ideas and, and, and you know, talk oh, talk with each other about what you're baking and maybe maybe do similar things at the same time as a way to sort of maintain that connection. Mm. Mm. But do it over Zoom or online. Don't don't do it in person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I think um, that's. Oh, hang on. One. Yep. So I think that's um, all the questions we have for today. Um, so yeah, I guess um, thanks, Kyle, for coming along for um, this little bonus episode of uh, COVID Chat. It's been really great to talk to you and talk to you know just talk about something a little bit different to the things that we normally talk about. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for, for giving up your time um, to come and chat with us. Um, and everyone else, we'll see you tomorrow at our normal time of 10 past four. Um, happy Easter weekend, everybody.
Thank you.